Welcome to this study of Matthew. The first gospel is named after Matthew, who has been identified by consistent church tradition as the author. Matthew, a Jewish man, a tax collector, he writes to a primarily Jewish audience about Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. Matthew is called the son of Alphaeus. He was a tax collector in Capernaum, which would have made for interesting dynamics with other disciples. Tax collectors were very unpopular amongst the people, particularly those in the fishing industry. Matthew would be paid a certain amount or percentage for the collection of taxes. Anything that he collected beyond his quota would be additional profit. He was a wealthy man since he was capable of entertaining large crowds in his home. Matthew was a significant person for Jesus in the evangelizing of tax collectors, prostitutes, and other people who are considered outcasts. Matthew himself would have been considered an outcast. The question of authorship and what language the Gospel of Matthew was written in are difficult. Since there is no manuscript evidence of Matthew writing in Aramaic, that was the language spoken by the Jewish people, similar to Hebrew, and then Hebrew, which was the religious language and the language of the Old Testament, I believe that it is best to accept that the Gospel was written in Greek. The questions of whether Matthew borrowed from Mark or Mark borrowed from Matthew have been supported well by authors from both perspectives. The answer to these questions does not impact the overall interpretation of the Gospel. It is difficult to understand why Matthew, an eyewitness, would borrow from Mark, who according to tradition was dependent on Peter for his main source. There are several personal details in Matthew that certainly show his involvement in its composition. As far as the date, the Gospel of Matthew was written before the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. Since his comments indicate that Jerusalem was still active at the time of his writing, the phrases to this day and until this day indicate that several years had passed since the life death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The best probable date is somewhere in the early AD 60s. As far as the first recipients, the Jewish flavoring for the gospel would suggest a church or community in which this emphasis on the Jewishness of Jesus and the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies would have some particular point, that is a predominantly Jewish community, Jewish and Christian. There are 21 stories of rejection in the Gospel of Matthew. The different groups, the different individuals, the different political and religious groups who have rejected Jesus in his lifetime. And this is a major thrust of Matthew's Gospel. He writes in part to show the various reasons why people and groups wrongly rejected Jesus as the Son of God, the Messiah. Well, how do we read Matthew? How do we put our feet into the sandals of time so that we read it or listen to it as an original recipient? Imagine as a young person you have heard of the Jewish rabbi by the name of Jesus. You know of his reputation as a miracle worker. He has popularity and he was enormously liked and had a great impact upon the lives of others. He was a so-called messianic deliverer like none other before. His teachings stirred the hearts and the minds of the multitudes. Many of the Jewish people believed that he was their Messiah and would lead them to victory against Rome. Yet the Jewish sects, the political hierarchy, they opposed him. The status quo rejected him. You would hope that Jesus would bring the kingdom to Israel, yet his life was ended through the political plotting of the Jewish and Roman authorities. You have heard accounts of his resurrection from the dead, but a story like that is very hard to believe. You wonder about this Jesus. Could it be true? Has he really risen from the dead? Was he the Messiah who was promised by the Old Testament prophets? You read the Gospel of Matthew so you might know, you might read, you might understand a first-hand account of the life of Jesus Christ. Eyewitnesses are very important. You want to read the evidence so that the messianic claims that have been made by Jesus and others in which he fulfilled Old Testament scriptures might be clearly examined. 
What has happened to the Messianic kingdom that was promised to Israel if Jesus was the Messiah? Why did so many people reject him? You hope that these and many other questions will be answered through your reading of the Gospel of Matthew. What is the main subject or argument of the Gospel of Matthew? What's the big idea? Matthew argues that Jesus of Nazareth, rejected by Israel, is the messianic king over mankind as proven by his fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, his preaching on the kingdom of heaven, his demonstration of divine power over disease, demons, and death, his prediction of apocalyptic events, and his resurrection from the dead. Matthew wrote with many purposes in mind. He wanted to encourage faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the King, as the Son of God, as Messiah, to challenge believers to disciple all the nations as they went about their lives, to demonstrate that Jesus fulfilled messianic prophecy, to show why Israel rejected Jesus, and to warn them of God's future judgment, to record the correct teachings about God's kingdom program as opposed to that espoused by Judaism of the day, to correct erroneous views about the law of God, to document the divine power of Jesus, to explain the postponement of the kingdom in view of Israel's rejection, and to reveal its future fulfillment and coming at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And finally, to show the righteous demands on those who want to enter the kingdom of heaven and how to live with other subjects in the kingdom. Key verses are found in Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 through 17. Jesus had asked the disciples, who do the men say that I am? And then he focused it in on them. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. A summary phrase for the book, the Gospel of Matthew, is the rejection and risen Jesus is the King and Messiah of Israel. Now, as you read through the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, you will see many themes, repeated motifs, and ideas. Matthew will focus on the names or, and or titles of Jesus. He will speak of the angel of the Lord, the work of the Holy Spirit, the fulfillment of messianic prophecies by Jesus. Matthew focuses in on the ministry and inclusion of Gentiles, the Magi, the Centurion, the Syrophoenician woman, and others. He will speak about the kingdom of God, about the religious sects, the political sects, in opposition, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, these sectarian people who opposed Jesus because they had their own agenda, judgment upon the nation for rejecting Jesus Christ, miracles of healing, casting out of demons, the fulfillment of the law by Jesus, and Sabbath controversies. The exegetical outline of the Gospel of Matthew shows that in the first three to four chapters, he speaks of the incarnation and preparation of Jesus for ministry. From chapter 4, verse 12, through the end of chapter 7, he speaks of precepts and practices of those who want to live in the kingdom. Remember that Jesus never taught or preached to Christians. He was speaking to the Jewish people of the day and explaining to them what were the requirements of the Old Testament scriptures upon those in the kingdom of heaven. Thirdly, we see that in chapters 8 through the end of chapter 10, Jesus manifests himself as the Messiah. Chapters 11 through chapter 13, Jesus is opposed by many religious groups. Chapters 13 through 18, Jesus is opposed by religious and political leaders, so he prepares his disciples for his death and prophetically reveals the future. The sixth section deals with chapters 19 through the end of chapter 25. Jesus teaches the people, even though opposition grows, they will be established. That they should expect this opposition as it grows 
towards the plotting of his crucifixion. And then in chapters 26 through 28, Jesus is judged and crucified, but raised from the dead and commissions his disciples to evangelize the world. Yes, Matthew writes to a Jewish audience. He writes to them to tell them, you don't have to be Jews anymore. You don't have to be under the law anymore. The fulfillment of prophecies has shown that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah, and that believing in him, you will become a Christ follower. Yes, Matthew argues that Jesus of Nazareth, rejected by Israel, is the messianic king over mankind, as proven by his fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies, his preaching on the kingdom of heaven, his demonstration of divine power over disease, demons, and death, his prediction of apocalyptic events, and his resurrection from the dead.